What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out 10 embarrassing Roman Reigns moments, WWE regrets. I can probably tell you, hopefully, there's the clip of Roman cutting that god-awful promo in his babyface days as the big dog, as Michael Cole used to say, so annoyingly, probably would force my Vince to say it. The suffering succotash promo. It has to be in here, right? That was one of the worst moments for Roman Reigns. Like, one of the worst. Not even a question. One of the worst. That's when I knew, oh, he's, they ruined him. He, they, they get him off my TV. Get him off. So we're going to check this out by none other than uh, Stunned by Wrestling. Appreciate all the love and support. Should be a good one. Let's do this thing. It's a little bit loud, y'all. Sorry about that. As of January 2023, Roman Reigns has been the WWE Universal Champion since August the 30th, 2020, a whopping two years and four months. The Tribal Chief is on the run of a lifetime and in my opinion has proved himself as one of the best top line heels in a very long time in for his sure. role as head of the table. For that sure, being for sure. said, his failed run as main event babyface was a disaster on almost every level and Look produced some awful moments contacts. that WWE and Roman himself would probably <laughs> like us to forget. But in life, we should all try to stay grounded and remain humble by remembering the lessons we learned in the past, those moments that keep us awake at night through sheer embarrassment. I've handily compiled a list of 10 of the most embarrassing moments so far from the career of Roman Reigns. <laughs> oh, if man. you're a wrestling fan, then you will already know how close we hold the Royal Rumble to our hearts. For many fans, it's their favourite date in the entire wrestling calendar. And even for lapsed fans alongside WrestleMania, they're kind of like the two times of year that they're drawn back into wrestling. What I'm trying to say is, don't mess with our Royal Rumble. Casting mm -hmm. our minds back to 2015, Daniel Bryan Mania was still gripping the WWE Universe. Bryan had recently returned from neck surgery and fans were hoping that he would reclaim his spot on top of the mountain, mm -hmm. something fans were expecting him to do mm -hmm. from the number 10 spot in the Royal Rumble match. Which would have been this legendary. This is what fans were invested in and while predictable, it would have been the result that sent them home happy. Unfortunately, yeah, if they would have pulled an audible again and had Daniel Bryan win that, win it, oh, that would have been great. People would love that. But that didn't happen. Fortunately, Bryan was eliminated after about 10 minutes and everyone was stunned. When Roman Reigns entered the match at number 19, the arena erupted in boos and jeering. Nobody wanted to see Reigns dominate and win this thing. Some hope was restored when the fans' second favourite, Dean Ambrose, mm -hmm. entered at number 25, but no. Reigns went on a rampage and even eliminated the fans' third favourite, Rusev, and went on to win the whole damn thing. Even The Rock looked embarrassed to be standing next to Reigns as he came out to raise his arm, and he did nothing to stop the boost. The WWE Network was still in its infancy in 2015, mm -hmm. and a huge benefit to all of us for just $9.99 a month, especially before the novelty wore off, and yet fans were so outraged by the result on the night they <laughs> took to Twitter in their thousands using the hashtag Cancel, cancel WWE Network. It. <laughs> it was one of the most misguided bits of booking ever devised by WWE and only made fans rally against WWE's chosen hero even more. Reigns' promo work since he's turned heel has been great. Uh, he's proving to be... Uh, I knew it had to be on there. It had to. I'm so glad we're past the suffering succotash days. Good God. A really natural, believable bad guy in his interviews and promos. But the same can't be said for the many promos he cut during his babyface Ooh. run. Frequently, Ooh. John Whoa. Cena would outclass him on the stick during their back and forths. And considering how highly contrived and scripted WWE's promos are, 
I hope they fired his scriptwriter. Perhaps that was the problem. The material Reigns was working with was a bit too wooden and not in line with his true self. One promo that sticks out as being ultra embarrassing was the one between Reigns and Seth Rollins in January 2015. Reigns called Rollins a snivelling little suck-up sellout full of suffering succotash. If WWE were trying to make Reigns look like the Cringe. biggest chump on the block, then this weird line certainly helped. Even respected WWE writer Brian Gerwitz warned his bosses at the time that scripting this was a bad idea. Wow. He said, I was consulting WWE at the time. I saw suffering succotash in the script, <laughs> and I was just like sending out flare guns, like, no, don't have him say that. Oh, There's no. no good way you could say that. Oh. But say Reigns did, and the WWE universe collectively felt second-hand embarrassment oh. for the poor guy. It was a... That's cold. When someone says, hey, don't have him say that, and you still have him say that, it's, it's like you didn't want him to get over with the fans. Match so bad that The Undertaker was apparently disgusted by it and actually apologised to Reigns for it. So this isn't all on Reigns. He did try his best here, but the match between mm -hmm. him and The Undertaker in the main event of WrestleMania 33 no. in 2017 was no. just awful. No. The build-up to the match was based around Reigns eliminating The Undertaker in the Royal Rumble and declaring that WWE was now his yard. What with him? being a big dog and all. In the night, <laughs> it was a no holds barred match and things fell apart from the opening bell and went downhill from there quick with botched power bombs, Undertaker not applying his yeah. submission move properly and a very awkward reverse tombstone pile driver. Oh. It was like watching the Phenom falling apart in front of our eyes. Reigns oh. predictably won the match, not that it would have helped for Undertaker to win it particularly and the fans booed and booed and booed. This all happened because The Undertaker couldn't just let the business go and retire gracefully, and it's a shame that Reigns was dragged into this mess of a match yeah. in the first place. In a feud that felt like it lasted forever, it King lasts. Baron Corbin oh, tussled man. with Reigns across five premium live events at the end of 2019 and the start of 2020. Some call it's funny saying Baron Corbin was the last guy to pin Roman Reigns. It's funny the, the worst feud of 2019... And that's a year that also featured the crap Miz versus Shane McMahon battle. Across those five matches between Reigns and Corbin, Reigns would suffer the indignation of losing to Corbin twice, and the fans quickly started to lose interest in the feud early on. Facts. The promos between the men were awful too, droning on week after week, and eventually they realised that the fans were basically falling asleep at ringside having to listen to this nonsense, so they decided that it was time to spice things up and get people talking again. Because Reigns was referring to himself as the big dog, WWE cleverly decided to introduce dog food into the equation, and so on an episode of SmackDown, Reigns ended up handcuffed to a ring post and showered in the stuff. Reigns would eventually return the favour to Corbin a few weeks later. The feud was rubbish, and it was a disgusting way to forward the storyline. Awful. Here's something that WWE Awful. will never mention again. It's the time that they had to suspend Roman Reigns due to a violation of the company's drug testing policy in June 2016. It was reported that Reigns tested positive for Adderall, which is a banned substance in WWE without a valid prescription. Reigns was the champion at the time, and yep. quite rightly, they made the decision to strip him of the title, and so Reigns hastily lost the belt just days before his ban to Seth Rollins at the Money in the Bank show. Thanks to his positive result, Reigns would also miss the build-up to the long-awaited triple threat match between the former Shield members at Battleground. After being caught out, Reigns tweeted, I apologise to my family, friends and fans for my mistake in violating WWE's wellness policy. No excuses, I own it. Some commentators at the time thought the policy violation would put an end to the Roman Reigns push in 2016. And to be fair, the company did punish him when he came back by demoting him to the upper mid-card. For a couple of months, 
anyway. And mm-hmm. then it was back to business. Yep. WWE has played up the relationship between Reigns and The Rock on many occasions, including that disastrous time he won the Royal Rumble that we mentioned earlier. And no doubt they will play up their tribal connection again when the inevitable feud between the pair takes place. If it does However, happen. it is a fact that Reigns is not actually biologically related to The Rock, no matter how much everyone goes on about them being cousins. Reigns is part of the Anoe family, the famous wrestling dynasty consisting of the likes of Yokozuna, Rikishi, Umaga, the Usos and others, but The Rock is not actually a member of that family. You see, back in the day, Reigns' granddad was best friends with The Rock's granddad. In fact, they were so close they considered each other blood brothers, which brought the two families very close together. Due to this, The Rock's family are considered to be part of the Anoe family, but they're not really cousins they're not actually related by blood and even if they were actually part of the same family the rock's mom was an adopted daughter of peter maivia so they still wouldn't be blood related so when it comes down to the rock and roman reigns being cousins it's just (laughs) another work in the wacky world Uh, i didn't even know that interesting i really didn't know that i thought they were like legit all family but i mean they're family like extended family not really family but close like family so you can kind of get away with that but i didn't know they weren't actually blood that's crazy the shield are one of the greatest factions in history and are remembered for making a huge impact on the company when they debuted at the survivor series in 2012 in the main event of that show the shield interfered in the main event triple threat match between cm punk john cena and ryback for the championship smashing ryback through a table with the triple power bomb that they would become famous for. The trio Mm -hmm. were a dominant force in six-man tag matches going forward, and out of Ambrose, Rollins, and Reigns, it was initially impossible to see a true leader of the group. They were considered equals, each important to the team in their own way. However, Reigns was not a first choice to be part of the group. On their debut, they were meant to be mercenaries for CM Punk, a literal shield for him. In fact, it was Punk's idea to put the team together in the first place as he pitched the idea while he was the champion in 2012. The idea was that they would help him retain his title. CM Punk revealed his initial plan for the group in a 2014 interview where he said, I took the idea to hunter i took it to vince they agreed vince was immediately like who do you have in mind and i said ambrose rollins chris hero or cassius ono hunter shot down hero reigns was lucky then that triple h had Mm -hmm. other ideas for the group and decided to go with him instead yeah there was a time when everyone hated john cena 2017 was not that time. No, by 2017, John Cena had come full circle and fans were largely on his side, perhaps seeing that the grass was greener with him than it was with (laughs) Roman Reigns as their lead babyface at the time, whose main event run had been going on for years by this point Mm -hmm. as the company continued to try and force him down the fans throats reigns had a real problem getting over as a face and the crux of the issue was his persona the fans just couldn't buy into him as he seemed ingenuine with his wise cracking jokes his awkward smile his mm-hmm. dilted stupid promos spouting lines that no one would ever say in real life reigns even froze up during an in-ring promo causing cena to ridicule him People are well. People have said that that was that's all a work. Him freezing up was supposed to happen. I still am one of them people. I don't I don't know how true that is, but I do believe he kind of forgot his lines. But they were saying that was that was a work. That was a work for it. You know, he was supposed to pretend to forget his lines. I don't know how true that is. Him. Reigns would go on to defeat Cena in their match at No Mercy in a result that nobody wanted. At nope. WrestleMania 34, Brock Lesnar faced Reigns in the main event, and nobody wanted to see this either. Nope. The event took place in New Orleans in front of 78,000 people. That's 78,000 unhappy fans, actually, who booed the heck out of this closing match at the Fact. Super Bowl of Wrestling. They say that any reaction is better than no reaction, but this can't have been fun to have to wrestle through, and it certainly wasn't fun to watch. WWE had tried this match once before at WrestleMania 31 in 2015. The only thing that saved that match was Seth Rollins cashing in his Money in the Bank contract Mm -hmm. and turning it into a genuinely brilliant 
a memorable WrestleMania mm-hmm. moment. No such luck in 2018. The match dragged on for nearly 16 minutes with Reigns kicking out uh, of Lesnar's everything. F5 on five separate occasions. Lesnar wrestled the same boring super. Bro, he made the move meaningless. <laughs> The finishing move, he kicked out like five. What? I was like, what? And then he just busted him open legit, gave him an elbow like he did to Randy Orton, had him fucking leaking and then won. I was like, what? I was so confused, bro. Beck's filled match that he'd been wrestling since 2012 and everyone was bored of seeing it. Lesnar retained the title in the end, not that it would have helped for Reigns to have won it. At the 35th edition of WrestleMania in 2016, it was Reigns versus Triple H for the World Heavyweight title, and oh boy, was this difficult to sit through. Years into the Reigns' babyface experiment, and fans were screaming at the TV and on the internet to just turn Reigns heel already. Yes. But no, this shit fest of a main event <laughs> dragged on for half an hour and did nothing to ingratiate awful, the big bro. dog with the fans. Predictably, Reigns would win the match and win the title. It was a result so predictable that fans were leaving the stadium in Texas early. No doubt that this slog was the shit-tainted icing on the cake for a show that had dragged on for six hours. Let's hope then that when Reigns inevitably turns face at some point in the future, the lessons have been learned from those years where the big dog babyface was just a big joke. Facts. I think his his babyface turn, whenever it does happen, will probably be much more uh, enjoyable. People will embrace it more because we would have been used to his character. I think it's going to be more or less... The same character is just less jokey. You know what I'm saying? It's not going to be all the cringy jokes. I think it will work now. He can he can literally just be the same guy, just a baby face. That's it. Like a, a Stone Cold. Like Stone Cold was a baby face from the fans' perspective, but he would still do like heel like stuff. It's just the fans loved him. So he can still be the same guy be you know ruthless can be aggressive but you know the fans love it. and he you know he gives high fives every now and then you can still do that you don't have to change him completely you know but i i do think um whenever he does drop the titles hope is at this year's wrestlemania he'll probably take a hiatus after this whole bloodline thing kind of you know separates because i'm sure they're gonna deal with that see how that plays out probably take a hiatus and then maybe come back and we'll see how things play out so i don't know but yeah these are the moments that WWE definitely uh, should regret what they did with Roman because, oh, they were awful and it didn't work. So comment down below. Let me know what was the most cringe moment from Roman Reigns' babyface years. It got to be the Suffer and Suck is hash. Like, it, it, it got to be. Suffering, Suck is hash in a promo, a grown-ass man saying that to another grown-ass man and to be taken seriously. In the main event promo segment, get them off my TV. Get them off. Get them off. That was the most cringe thing they ever did to Roman. They did them dirty, man. But I appreciate all love and support. Road to 150K. I'm still your NSPD YouTube Wrestling Champion of the World. And you're in the Clutch World Heavyweight Champion. Appreciate y'all kicking me. See y'all next one. Peace.